Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Aaron. Let's have everybody say, hi, Aaron. Hi. Howdy. I am an informal science educator. And I'm actually lucky enough to be one of those very few people who almost never, ever get bored. Um, I am truly fascinated by the universe, how it works. And so science is a natural Great outlet time. for Fantastic. my passion for learning. Oh. <laughs> now, I think I owe a lot of the thanks and a fair deal of the blame to my parents for how I turned out. Um, as a child, I, I wasn't job. special. I was actually fairly typical. I oh, really asked cool. why. I wanted to know. Really cool. I wanted to know why. Every child is like that. We are born with that spark to want to learn. Um, we're born tiny scientists. From the time that we're able, we are exploring the world. What we see, what we hear, what we smell, what we touch, and as babies, what we taste. And as we get older, we start asking why. Much to my parents' benefit, they never wanted to snuff out that spark. So they were always happy with me asking why. One of my early memories is making Play-Doh with my mom. Um, now, I'm sure some of you have tried this at home. It's flour, salt, oil, um, hot water. And you mix it together. OK, maybe you add in a little bit of Kool-Aid. Gives it a neat smell. I was fascinated by how the finished product the properties of it were different from the ingredients that went in, the way that it felt, the way that you would form like this, this gelatin type material. And I wanted to know why. My mom didn't know. And much to her benefit, she was comfortable saying, I don't know. But then she said, let's go find out. And so we, we got on our bikes and we rode to the local library. And just like every time, all right, Aaron, here's the deal. You can have as many books as you can fit in your backpack. Just like every single time, I probably got twice as many. Just like every time, I had this amazing reason for why I needed this book. Because this book explains what this book doesn't. And, and, and then this book explains what that book doesn't. And this book on medieval siege weapons is just awesome, so I really need this one too. <laughs> Bless her heart, every time she would take pity on me and she would let me take all those books home. She would carry the rest of them for me. I think my parents understood that Every child is born with that spark. They didn't want to snuff that out. They wanted, they wanted to fan that flame because they realized that the entire point was asking the questions. The, the answers are important, but it's the journey of actually getting there. And that's what started me off. That really is where the passion for learning came from. So fast forward a couple decades. I'm, I'm living in Portland, Oregon. Um, and I got the opportunity to work as a mad scientist. That's right. On my, on my resume for two years, officially, I was a mad scientist. <laughs> Think of it like being a contract teacher. Um, you get given supplies and directions, and you go to a school or a community group or a church, and you do a class. You do a hands-on lesson, you do a show, you do a birthday party. They train you, of course, because you're doing some dangerous things, and they also give you training in things like classroom management. And my personal favorite was one called how to be absolutely fascinating with nothing but a bucket of dirt. Yeah. I, I was amazed when I heard about that. I was like, ooh, this is, this is going to be good. I expected it to be very practical, like, you know, talking about rocks. What it turned out to be was pedagogy. And they, they were bringing up a very important point. Anybody who's ever done education has been caught in a situation where you are unprepared. You don't have the supplies that you need. And you need to engage somehow without being able to fall back on what you immediately expected to do. And so what it boiled down to was, remember why you came here in the first place. Being an educator is not easy. Being, being an informal science educator is definitely not easy. So fall back on that passion. You're doing this because you love it. You're doing this because you love science. So if you were caught in this situation, Depend on that. Teach what you know. Teach from where you are coming from. And sure enough, I mean, it couldn't have been a month or two later, I was at a school to do an after-school program, and I expected to have a kit waiting for me. It was being used earlier in the day by another scientist who would then bring it there, and I would have it. And of course, it didn't show up. 
This is one of those situations where I actually wish I would have had a bucket of dirt to play with. But instead, I'm in a classroom, and it's not my classroom, so I can't just go through the materials, and I have 25 third and fourth graders expecting their first science class. And I'm in my early 20s at this point, and so I'm nervous. I, I don't know what to do, and I have to have something to do with my hands. So I look around, and I pick up a few things off the teacher's desk, you know, probably some whiteboard erasers, some markers, and I start juggling. Very simple. I've always kind of had an interest in the circus arts. And the kids are like, whoa, that's amazing. How do you do that? And so I'm talking about motion. You know, I'm talking about the timing of it. And all of a sudden, I realize I'm talking science. So we start talking about Newton, the three laws of motion. And we start talking about energy and how things move through space. And all of a sudden, I realize these kids are hooked. They're listening to me, and they're, they're responding. And from there, we springboard off, and we start talking about motion, energy, and atoms. Because, you know, it's the motion of atoms that determine how hot or cold an object is. And so now we're talking thermodynamics. So at this point, they've bought in. And I get them all standing up, and I have them moving around. They're simulating the atoms in an object, and I'm heating it up. And as I heat up that object, the atoms start to move faster. So the kids are now moving around a little bit faster. They're starting to bump into each other. And we're talking about, this is, this is the heat. This is what's happening as you heat it up. All right, now I'm cooling you down. Didn't want anybody getting hurt. Now I'm cooling you down. And you know, they're, they're cooling down, and they're moving slower. And I actually managed to introduce a really complex topic. I introduced them to the idea of the absolute temperature scale, the Kelvin scale, and absolute zero, which is the point at which all atomic motion stops. And just like that, we had this wonderful class where we talked about something that I've always been passionate about, physics, and the basics of science with nothing but a few things that I could juggle with, and that was it. And at the end of the hour-long class, they didn't want to leave. They had to, of course, and <laughs> their parents were there, but they were looking forward to coming back that next week. And what I really took from that is that it was my passion. It was what I believe in, the things that I love, which is the basics of science. I mean, I love advanced science. Quantum physics is really cool, but you don't have to go that far. The basics of motion, energy, how things move, is utterly fascinating to me. And if I can share that, we don't need fancy equipment and apparatuses to do that. And that really taught me something about what it takes to be an informal science educator. So fast forward maybe a little bit less than another decade, and in Portland, working for the Oregon Museum of Science and Industry, OMSI, and I got the opportunity, um, I got told that there was a science center opening up in Spokane called the Mobius Science Center. And like every other person in Oregon, I went, Spokane? Is that in Canada? <laughs> so you know, I did, I did my research, it's, whoa, like third largest city in the Pacific Northwest, okay. <laughs> I need to work on my geography a little bit. And I came up here for an interview and met with the people. Um, we were actually weren't even in the building that we're in right now. We had these offices and interviewed with them. And I remember after the interview, we made putty, the uh, glue and borax solution. And we were playing with that as part of the interview. And so we started talking about the job. And I was asking them, like, you know, what are we looking at? Like, what are the boundaries? And they said, well, STEM. Science, technology, engineering, math. This is what we teach. Cool. So, what do you guys got so far? Um, hopefully we have you. <laughs> okay, cool. Ten days later, I was living here in Spokane. It is a great crew of people, very, very small, very, very dedicated people who are dedicated towards making science accessible. It's our passion not only just from the education standpoint, but our development team who wants to find the money to take the science to the outlying areas, the, the executive director on down, everybody has the same passion to make how we feel about science something that everybody can connect with. We have a great science center. It's 27,000 square feet, over 65 hands-on exhibits, a few exhibits that are unique to us as a science center, stuff you won't find at the Pacific Science Center or OMSI. What I'm most proud of, though, right now, just right now, is our outreach program. Um, as part of what we do, we take our science out to the community, um, to a large 
area because I didn't realize how big the Inland Northwest was. But we can go almost anywhere. Um, our mobile digital planetarium, the science demonstration shows. And we can then share what we believe in and what we feel about science with everybody. So the rule is, okay, it needs to be sustainable, it needs to travel, and it needs to be affordable because we're a nonprofit, so poor. So what we have is we have three educators. In fact, our director of education is an educator himself, so we have three educators. And what we're allowed to do is we're allowed to think of, okay, I love biological science. It's part of what we're teaching. How, how do I get this across? How do I use my creativity? How do I use my passion for what I'm learning and get it across to other people? And they're giving us the leeway to do that. One of the things that I love doing is chemistry. Um, at a science center, you have physics, you have aeronautics, you have a bunch of stuff, but chemistry is hard to do on the floor of a science center. And so I have a series of, of chemical demonstrations that I take absolutely everywhere. And one of the things that I love about it is that chemistry, chemical reactions are universal. It doesn't matter if you speak a different language from me. It doesn't matter if you have a different belief system for me, a different socioeconomic status. If you mix together the same chemicals that I do, we get the same chemical reaction. I mean, okay, so for example, baking soda and vinegar. Who's ever mixed those two together? <laughs> of course, of course, yeah, and, and we all know what we get. We get a mess, yeah. I mean, you're making a gas. It's a sign of a chemical reaction. You're making carbon dioxide gas. Somebody on the other side of the world doing the same thing will get the same chemical reaction. We'll get the same mess. So what we can do is we can take these simple reactions, we can take these simple scientific things, and it doesn't take much. I don't need a big fancy apparatus, I don't need a fume hood, I don't need all these fancy things to be able to share that passion and to be able to communicate with just about anybody that we come across. Now, when I found out that I had the opportunity to do something like this today, one of the things I wanted to make sure is that I could actually have a demo be part of what I do. I feel that this is very important because not only is it my passion to share the things about basic scientific chemical reactions, but this also goes in really, really well with the mission and the passion that we share at Mobius. At Mobius, we are there to spark curiosity and ignite imagination. And we do that by sharing of who we are and the things that ignite our imagination. And sometimes when you're out there and you're doing these kinds of experiments, you find out that you are quite literally igniting the imagination. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs>